In part 4 of this series, we discuss four important spiritual disciplines that we must maintain to stay emotionally whole. First, renouncing the lies with the truth of the word. Second, speak blessing, cancel curses. Third, guard against negative emotions. And fourth, practice the power of forgiveness. All right, we're going to rise up to our feet and make our declaration this morning. So let's all just uh, get up to or stand up to our feet. If you brought your Bible, uh, I want you to hold your Bible high up in the air. Let this, let's just say this out loud, bold and strong together. This is God's Word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing. To many people, I receive His Word, I believe His Word, and I live by His Word. Christ is my Master, and to Him... I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you turn around to the person sitting next to you or standing next to you, in front of you, behind you. Say hello, give them your name, and uh, smile at them, and then you may be seated, please. Thank you. I don't know, somebody just uh, wrote a little word of testimony here this morning and just passed it down, so I'll, I'll read it. Um, uh, she, meant, she just mentions here, she has come to, ch- uh, uh, I guess today would be her third time attending church, but last Sunday, I think it was, yeah, last Sunday, uh, she came for time of prayer here, and, uh, she, and she was prayed for, she, uh, I'm not sure exactly what her physical problem was, but uh, she writes here on her testimony that on Wednesday she was completely healed, she started praying in tongues, and uh, the Holy Spirit started working in her life. So she just sent this little word. We just want to thank the Lord. Uh, I don't have more details, but thank God for that. Amen. All right. So we've been spending uh, several Sundays, in fact, all of July and uh, the Sundays that we have in the month of August, uh, talking on the subject of emotional wholeness. And so we are just building on it little by little, and, uh, and we thank God for what He's doing in the lives of people uh, as, as people are just receiving His Word and, and experiencing God working in their lives. I just want to quickly review a few things and then spend uh, our time here focused on what we want to cover this morning. Uh, in uh, Third John chapter 1 and verse 2, this verse that we have referred to very often, uh, John, the beloved disciple of Jesus, he writes, he says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper, that you be in health, even as your soul prospers. So, we said it's all right to pray and say, God, prosper us. It's all right to pray and say, God, heal us. He wants us to prosper. He wants us to be in health. But all of that is connected to the well-being of our soul, even as your soul prosper. This says you're prospering, you're doing well in your soul. I want you to do well in, in life, in your body, in your health, and so on. And so the well-being of our soul is important, is of concern to God. And we saw in Psalm 23 and verse 3 that He restores our soul. So it's the Lord who is our healer. Just as we go to Him for help and healing and, and in other areas of our lives, we go to God even for healing of our soul, the restoration of our soul. So as we journey through life, of course, we're going to have things that happen to us that hurt us and all of that. All of us have gone through things. And so we have to go to God. He is the restorer of our souls. And that is the premise on which we are building this whole series that God is the restorer of our souls. Uh, In part one of this series, we talked about the problems and the causes. You know, there are several problems that we can identify, and several causes that we identified uh, and said, okay, these are the things that we're actually dealing with. In part two, we talked about receiving healing and deliverance. 
So in order for us to experience emotional wholeness, there is healing, there is deliverance, and there is this journey into wholeness. Healing and deliverance happens at this time when you pray, and we did that when we, in our second message in this series, we all prayed together, uh, we took our authority, we, 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 we received healing and deliverance. Deliverance is we dealt with spirits that would uh, cause problems. Uh, as we said, there are times when there are evil spirits working, demons working, causing problems, and we dealt with that. But then we also said that we have to journey into wholeness. It's not just enough to pray and do that. You've also got to journey into this place of wholeness. There are things that you and I need to do, spiritual truth that we need to embrace, spiritual disciplines that we need to maintain in our life in order to journey into wholeness. So we began that last Sunday. We said, in our journey into wholeness, we need to be established in three very important truths and, 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 and be rooted, established firmly in that. First, we have to be established in the Father's love for us. That God loves us. That no matter what we go through, the Father, His love for us is immeasurable. It's unconditional. You've got to be settled in that. Don't let anything disturb you, shake you from that. The second thing, we've got to live out of our identity in Christ. Who you are in Christ. You live out of that identity. And, 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 and you journey through life living out of that. The third we talked about was learning to release the past. The past is behind us. You've got to release that. And we make our journey into emotional wholeness. So this morning, as we build further, I want to talk about, I want to share with us four important disciplines that you and I need to maintain. These are spiritual disciplines that you and I need to maintain to stay emotionally whole. What do we do to stay whole? Because we are going to be Faced with all kinds of situations, things that happen around us. And we need to know how to stay whole. How to guard our mind, our emotions. Keep them strong, healthy, whole. Four things that I want to share. Four spiritual disciplines. These are, this might be familiar to some of us, but it's always good to just go over it again. The four things that we want to talk about this morning, first of all, is renouncing lies with the truth of the word. Renouncing lies with the truth of the word. The second we're going to talk about is speak blessing, cancel curses. Third is to guard against negative emotions. And the fourth we will cover is practice the power of forgiveness. Practice the power of of forgiveness. So you and I need to maintain these spiritual disciplines in our lives in order to stay emotionally whole. So let's talk about each one of them briefly. The first one, renouncing lies with the truth of the word. You know, our mind will be bombarded with all kinds of lies. Some of it could come from other people. They may be well-meaning, sincere, good, uh, they may have your interests in mind, and yet some of the counsel they give or the advice they give may not be aligned to the Word of God. They're well-meaning, they don't intend harm, but just that what they say is not the truth. It could lead us down the wrong path. It could lead us into wrong things. And so we need to guard against that. Sometimes it could come from people who intend to harm us. They would say wrong things. And sometimes these lies could come from the enemy who injects wrong thoughts, reasonings, ideas into our mind. So regardless of the souls, the fact that it is a lie, we need to renounce it, get rid of it. Don't embrace the lie. Because when you and I embrace the lie, we empower the father of lies. That is the devil. When you and I embrace the truth, we empower God. I mean, when it's used the word empower, doesn't mean he needs power. We're giving him access into our lives to work in our lives when we embrace the truth. But when we embrace the lie, you're saying, okay, devil, you've got a chance to work in me now because I'm believing what you're saying. John 8 and verse 44, Jesus referred to the devil as the father of lies. 
He's a father of lies. And so for you and me to effectively counteract lies, we need to be established in the truth of the word of God. You need to know, what does the word of God say? And so Jesus taught us in that same chapter in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. He said, if you continue in my word, if you abide in my word, you will know the truth. So you and I must continue in the word. So we know the truth. And with the truth, you counteract the lies that come into your mind. So, for example, a thought comes to your mind. Maybe, you know, something has happened. And let's just use a very simple example. You didn't get good grades in your studies. So something, a thought comes, man, never going to make it in life. It's been happening just too often. Never going to make it in life. Now that thought, what are you going to do with that thought? You've got to renounce it, reject it. How? With the truth of the word. The word says, for example, you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You will bring forth your fruit in its season. Your leaf will not wither and whatever you do will. So you say, no, I reject that thought that, that is telling me I will never make it in life. Maybe I failed, but this is an inc incident. It is not going to determine my entire future. So I'll reject that lie. Say no. Now, you know what happens when you and I embrace a lie. The lie becomes a reasoning. The reasoning becomes an imagination. The imagination becomes a stronghold. And a stronghold then gets a grip on you. Saying, this is the way your life is going to be. So you've got to check it at the point of thought. Say, no. God's word tells me that he knows the plans he has for me. Plans to prosper me. Plans to give me a hope and a future. So I reject this thought that says... I never make it in life. Now, sometimes that thought could come from your teacher. So come here. <laughs> this is the third time I'm seeing you get the same grade. You're really not going to make it in life. <laughs> you know, maybe the teacher's upset, whatever. Now, they may say that, but you have a choice. Whether you're going to take that or you're going to go back and say, sure, I've got the same mark the third time, but I still believe that God will help me rise above this. So you make a choice to renounce the lie, reject the lie, and embrace the truths of the word. What does God say about that situation? The same thing that can happen in business. Maybe you tried once, it didn't, wasn't successful. You tried a second time, wasn't successful. And sooner or later, maybe people are telling you, you know, you can never succeed, man. You just, just give up. Or these thoughts may come on your mind saying, you can never succeed. But that's when you've got to rise up and say, no, God is for me. He will help me. He will empower me. You, you live by the word of God. Amen? So, do this every day. Every day. Because lies bombard our mind on a daily basis. So on a daily basis, you and I need to guard our minds and uh, renounce lies and God or uh, counteract those lies with the truth of the word. The second thing, to maintain, to stay emotionally whole, is to speak blessing, cancel curses. Speak blessing, cancel Curses. Now, this is something you've probably heard us talk about so much over and over again. That our words are important. In Proverbs the 18th chapter, verses 20 and 21, we are familiar with those verses. It says, a man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. What comes out of your mouth is going to affect your life. And then it says in verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. God said it. Death and life are in the power of your words. Your words are carriers of either blessing or cursing. Your words bring life or death. So words are important. And you and I must make a choice to speak blessings, speak words of life. A great example is that in the Old Testament when God uh, was telling Aaron, Aaron, this is how you put my blessing on my people. Here's I'm going to how I'm going to tell you, you you should do it. And in Numbers, the sixth chapter, verses 22 to 27, God tells Aaron, he says, tells Moses, tell Aaron, verse 23, this is how you're going to do it. This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them. 
Speak words over them. Say to them. Say what? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. And thus you will put my name and on, on the children of Israel and you will bless them. See, the words you speak bring blessing. They can bring blessing to your life. Bring blessing to those around you. Parents. What words do you put on your children? Words of blessing, if it's not blessing, it's the opposite, words of cursing. <laughs> what words? Your words can release blessing on their lives. So speak blessing. Speak life over your children. Speak life over your own self. Speak blessing over your own self. And cancel curses. What is a curse? It's the opposite of a blessing. A blessing does you good. A curse does you harm. It does evil. Cancel those curses. Those curses could be things you put upon yourself. Many of us have self-inflicted curses. Things that you've spoken about yourself. Man, I'm losing it. Oh. I'm going mad. <laughs> sure. <laughs> So like this, the all kinds of things that we speak about ourselves, sometimes not even thinking about those things. And those are words, and words are carriers. Words impinging on your own life, which you are speaking yourself. They are self-inflicted curses. Now, there may be things other people speak about you. Whether other people speak those words over you, or whether you have spoken over yourself, cancel them, negate them. You say, in Jesus' name, I cancel the power of those words. I cancel those things that I've spoken over my own life, or that were spoken over me. I cancel the power of those words. I release blessing in the name of Jesus. You have the right to do that. Are you with me? You do that. Now, sometimes, you know, as parents, and I'm guilty of this as well, that when we discipline our kids, we call them all kinds of names. <laughs> then after I've done my discipline, I realize, oh, no, I should not have said that. <laughs> so I say, in Jesus' name, I cancel those words. <laughs> I cancel what I just spoke. And I speak blessing. That happens. But I cancel those words. I don't want my kids to live under those words. I want them to live under the blessing of God. So I intentionally make sure I keep speaking blessing over my children. And, you know, Joshua's not here. He's far away. But that's okay. Regardless of where they are, I speak words of blessing. Declare blessing over his life. Declare blessing over my daughter's life. Declare blessing because words carry blessing. Cancel negative words that you may have spoken. And some of us sometimes have also made vows internally. We call them inner vows. That means you have spoken to yourself and said certain things. And those vows have actually caged you. For instance, maybe you went through a, a, a betrayal in life. And so you vowed to yourself, I will never trust somebody or never trust anyone. Because it's too painful to trust them and then be betrayed. So now you can't trust anybody. You can't trust your parents. can't trust your brother and sister. can't trust your spouse. You would never trust anybody. What's holding you there? It's a vow that you've made with yourself. I will never trust anybody. And that's what's caged you. Got to break that. Yes, you may have gone through an experience... You're not denying the experience, but you've got to break that vow that you made because of that. Come out of it because it hinders your relationships with people. It hinders the way you interact with people. So cancel those vows that you made with yourself. You know, the Bible has a great example of, of a man called Jabez. There are only two verses about him 
in First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, it says in verse 9 that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. I mean, he outdid. He earned greater respect than all his brothers. And his mother, but it gives us a little bit about his background. His mother called his name Jabez saying, because I bore him in pain. So can you imagine having a name that says, here's someone who will cause pain. Someone who causes pain, Jabez. They put a label on him. Not his fault. A label put on him, Jabez. One who causes pain. But what did Jabez do? Verse 10. Now Jabez called on the name of, God, of the God of Israel saying, Oh that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. That your hand would be with me. And that you would keep me from evil. That I may not cause pain. And God granted him his request. See? Something his mom put upon him. Maybe she thought it was fun. So I'll remember, I'll never forget. <laughs> whatever, whatever reason why she named him Jabez. Because of the pain that she had. She named him that way. But he decided he's not going to live under that label. He decided his life is going to be different. He prayed to the Lord God of Israel saying, God, you bless me. You enlarge my territory and you make sure I do not cause pain to people. And God heard that. God blessed him. And therefore the Bible says Jabez was more honored than all his brothers. So what labels have people put upon you? Maybe your parents. Maybe while well, you're growing up, teachers in school. Maybe your friends. Uh, maybe labels you put upon yourself. And, and all these labels, they try to define you. They try to hold you down. But I want to encourage you, break those labels. Cancel those curses. Break those vows. Take the word of God. What did God say about you? What does God, what can God do in you, through you? You pray to the God of Israel. You pray to the God of the Bible saying, God, this is what I want because it's in your word. This is what I want to be. And God will honor that in your life. You know, as a child of God, really... No one else can put a curse on you. You are a covenant person. You're a child of God. Balaam found that out about God's people in Numbers 23, verse 23. He said, there is no sorcery against Jacob, no divination against Israel. My witchcraft is not going to work on them because they're God's people. It will not prevail against them. He realized that. He can't curse whom God has blessed. And the Bible is so clear in Proverbs 26 verse 2 that, that a curse without a cause will not descend, will not come upon your life. The only reason is when you permit them. And one of the big ways you permit curses to alight on your life is with your own words. So God has blessed you. But if you negate His blessing with your own words, you are opening up. You're giving opportunity for these curses to alight on you. The third one is to guard against negative emotions. You know, people will hurt us. Sometimes it's just accidental. They don't mean it. They may say something in jest. They may laugh at us, whatever. And it can hurt. People in the workplace, people around you, family members. Offenses will come. But you and I must learn to guard against negative emotions settling inside of us. They are toxic. They are harmful to us. So we got to guard ourselves from negative emotions. It will come. I don't think there is any stage of life that is free from, that can be guaranteed free from hurt or offenses. It's going to come. But you and I must learn how to guard ourselves from negative emotions. I was speaking with a young man yesterday and he shared with me how from the age of 8 till now, he's 38. He's not had a good relationship with his father. And it hurts him today even to talk to his dad. The moment he talks to his dad, all this anger, emotion comes up. And verse 
They had a bad experience with church. With the pastor. I mean, not, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever he went before. And to, if, even to think about them causes all this negative emotion coming up. He says, I want to be free. I don't want to feel like this. Now he's a good, he's a believer. He loves Jesus. But inside him, it's there. The best thing you and I can do is to guard against it. Don't let it settle in. The moment you have this negative moment, it will come. Somebody may laugh at you. Somebody may not look at you. You're expecting them to look at you. They don't look at you. You feel offended. <laughs> and it works the other way. You don't want somebody to look at you and they do look at you. <laughs> Why are they looking at me? I mean, all these crazy things happen in life. But all these things, they cause emo, you know, negative things. But the best thing you and I can do is to guard against it. And I just want to share with you two simple things that you can you do it at that moment. So do it as soon as you can. First is to let Jesus take it away. Let the Lord take that emotion away. And second, you determine to live in a place of peace. Okay, and let me just take, explain how you do it in practice. You know, Isaiah 53 and verse 4 says, it's talking about the cross 2,000 years ago. Surely, he has borne our sicknesses and carried, he has borne our graves and carried our sorrows, our sicknesses and our pains. So on the cross 2,000 years ago, Jesus was a sin bearer, a sickness bearer, a pain bearer. He took it. And here you and I are, 2,000 years later, we come in time, we look back to the cross, he did it then, but today I need to personally experience it. So today I personally ask him, Lord, you remove this from me. He is my sin bearer. He is my sickness bearer. He is my pain bearer. So when there is sin, I give it to the Lord. Lord, forgive me, you take this away. And there is sickness, Lord, you take it away. And there's pain, I do the same. Lord, take this away from me. Right? So I pray. God, I feel like this. You know, so and so did this, so and so said that, and, or this didn't happen, they let me down, that, whatever. You know, we all have all those experiences. But the moment happens, Lord Jesus, I feel like this. I mean, be honest. There's nothing wrong. He in any way knows our feelings. Let's be honest. God, I feel like this. I mean, I feel hurt. I feel angry. I feel this. I feel that. Whatever. We all have feelings. Ah, I feel like this. But Jesus, take it away. I give it to you. Take it away. I pray. Lord, take it away. So yesterday, as I sat with that young man, I said, let's pray. Lord, I prayed. So Lord Jesus, you take this away. It's been there now, built up for 30 years. It's a long time. Lord Jesus, take it out. Take it out. So let Jesus take it away. Do it as soon as you can. Don't let it settle in. And second, live in the place of peace. You know, Jesus said this to us, and you and I are familiar with these verses. In John 14, 27, he said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. It's not, not as the world gives. I give to, as I, not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. So he's giving us his peace. Again, he repeats that in John 16, 33. He says, these things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. So look, in the world there are going to be problems. But... I've given you my peace. So each one of us have, has the opportunity to live in the peace of God. It's there. He's given it. You can live in a place of peace. In the world, there will be tribulation. There will be problems. All things happening. But you can live in the place of 
I mean, a great picture is Jesus sleeping in the boat in the middle of a storm. Hey, how could you do that, Jesus? But you and I can live in the place of peace. What do I need to do? Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, You thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on you. So I can stay in perfect peace if I keep my mind, my thoughts, my focus. I keep that on the Lord. So in the middle of any storm, I don't get obsessed with the storm. I know there is a storm, but I keep my eyes on the Lord. Yes, there is a storm. Yes, it may be hard and all of that, but mind is stayed on the Lord. I'm leaning on the Lord. Who He is. God, you're bigger than the storm. You're bigger than the complexity of the problem I have to solve. You're bigger than the mountain in front of me. You're bigger than all of this. Keep your mind stayed on the Lord. Secondly, Philippians 4, 6 through 8. These are familiar verses. It says, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything, through prayer, supplication. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. You put that request before the Lord. Thank Him. And His peace will guard your heart and mind. You know, parents, I, I, I think, at least for us, Amy and me, you know, our son Joshua is away. So we're like... We're always concerned. And now he's gone on his world tour of his own. You know, it's like, are we concerned? Uh, so as parents, you feel concerned. What do you do? Do this. Pray, Lord. Don't get anxious about anything, but pray. Release it to God. Take a hold of his word. And then his peace keeps your heart and Gives you peace. You can sleep well at night. Because you released it to the Lord. And you're taking hold of his word. You're keeping your mind stayed on the Lord. His peace will guard your heart and mind. So you live in that place of peace. By keeping your mind stayed on the Lord. And releasing the prayer and the needs. The releasing that to the Lord. And letting his peace guard your heart and mind. So you and I must guard ourselves against negative emotions. Don't let it come in. I mean, you can feel it, but don't let it settle it. The moment you have this, let the Lord take it. If it is anxiety, Lord Jesus, take it. If it's anger, Lord Jesus, take it. Whatever, let him carry it. And then live in a place of peace. The fourth discipline that you and I need to just maintain in our lives is to Stay emotionally whole is to practice the power of forgiveness. I know we've talked about this. We touched on forgiveness the last two Sundays. But again, I want to emphasize, this is so important. Practice the power of forgiveness. So when somebody hurts you, what do you do? Forgive. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 31 and 32, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all hatred. Just get rid of all of these negative things. And instead it says, you be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So you forgive. So I can get rid, the way we get rid of bitterness, all of these negative things, anger, evil speaking, hatred, is by us choosing to be kind to be tender, to be forgiving. I choose to do that because God has forgiven us in Christ. When I forgive, then I'm able to get rid of bitterness, hatred, evil speaking, and all these are clamor and all these other things. Get rid of it. Forgiveness is so important because forgiveness makes me whole. Forgiveness not only wipes the, uh, wipes the other person's slate clean, it actually makes me whole. Forgiveness makes me whole. Because when I forgive somebody, the hurt that they inflicted on me no longer causes pain. 
I'm not denying the hurt. Yeah, it happens. But that hurt no longer causes pain because I have forgiven. So forgiveness brings me healing in as much as I erase someone else's wrong. Are you with me? It's important. So God, forgive. It heals me. I want to close with this. The other power, powerful thing forgiveness does for us. This is in Job chapter 42, verse 10. As the book of Job winds down in the last chapter, God comes on the scene and he says, you know, Job's three friends, you guys, you guys are really messed up. I want you to take an offering and go and ask forgiveness from Job. And Job, I want you to pray for your friends. Now, what happens? You know, when Job have started having all these calamities come upon his life, his three friends ganged up on him and started telling him all things that were just accusing him. Job, you must be sinful. You must be doing wrong things. There's some sin in your life. And all of that, and on and on and on they went. And uh, Job was trying to maintain his innocence. No, my hands are clean. I have not offended anybody. I've been fair to all my workers. I have not committed this. I have not committed that. And, and Job was maintaining his innocence. And the, the book does not, the book of Job does not state this, but it's quite possible that by the time you come to the end of it, Job must have been feeling angry, bitter, resentful towards his three friends. All they did was sit next to him and accuse him. And so in Job 42 verse 10, the Bible says that when Job prayed for his friends, and I think that's very significant. He prayed for those three people who were sitting next to him and pointing fingers at him. Saying, Job, you're wrong. You messed up. All this, done this, done that. And Job was trying to defend himself. And God says, Job, pray. When he prayed for them, I don't think he prayed the prayer of doom and destruction. <laughs> I'm assuming, and I think it's safe to assume, he prayed the prayer of forgiveness. He prayed the prayer of blessing over them. So when Job prayed for his friends, the Bible says, God restored everything. God turned everything around. And God restored everything. The work of the accuser, the devil, was stopped. When Job prayed for his accusers. Amen. So what do you do when people accuse you? What do you do when people point fingers at you and tell you all the wrong things? Pray. Release forgiveness. Pray blessing. It will stop the accuser from coming up against you. It breaks the power of the accuser. Amen. So forgiveness, extending forgiveness is very powerful. It heals you. It stops the work. Of the accuser. Four things we covered this morning. Renounce lies. With the truth of the word. Speak blessing. Cancel curses. Guard against negative emotions. By letting Jesus carry them away. And choosing to live in a place of peace. Practice the power of forgiveness. Amen. Let's take a few moments just to do that. I call our worship team up, please. You can remain seated as we just take a few moments to pray. And this is between you and God. If you this morning feel that, you know, I need to renounce some lies that I've picked up. Things about yourself. So, God, I renounce these lies. I choose not to embrace them. Because embracing the lie empowers the liar, the father of lies. I choose to believe your word. Maybe you've spoken some curses over your own self. I mean, you don't mean it intentionally, but those are words. And words release either blessing or cursing. So would you just cancel those wrong things you've spoken about yourself and say, God, I cancel it. And in Jesus' name, I speak blessing over my life. Right where you are, just do this. Or if you've been carrying negative emotions. Maybe it's because of some thing that happened. Or 
because of somebody, some person, who just asked the Lord, Lord, could you remove this from me? And I want to live in a place of peace. And practice the power of forgiveness with somebody, or maybe a few people who may have hurt you. Right now, would I seated here, would you just say, God, I forgive. I pray for them. I pray blessing over them. I speak forgiveness to them. Let's just take a few moments to do this, please. Lord Jesus, even as we are seated here this morning, and God, you know each person individually, personally, God. You know, God, areas of our soul that needs to be touched and healed, made whole. And Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that God, if there are people here who have negative emotions that are that have settled inside of them, I pray that this morning, right here in this service, this moment, God, that you will take it out of them. Just as you've removed our sin. You remove sickness and disease. Lord, remove these negative emotions out of their being. Whether it's pain, whether it's anger, whether it's bitterness. Lord Jesus, take this out of them. Lord, I pray for grace right now to empower people, to empower us in this place, to release forgiveness to those who may have hurt us, to those who may have used us or abused us, to those who may have sometimes even unintentionally, God, done things that have hurt us. Give us the grace to forgive all over this place. And I pray, God, that even as people engage with you in prayer, I ask for the healing of their bodies. I take authority over sicknesses, diseases, ailments that are connected to the problems of the soul. God, as you heal their soul, let their bodies experience healing. In the name of Jesus, Father, and there be healings taking place in their bodies as well. That every spirit of infirmity that has gained access to the body be removed right now in the name of Jesus. That there be healing released in their bodies. Just thank you, Lord. Thank you. going to stand up. Let's rise up to our feet, please, and just worship a few moments before we close this morning. I'll hand this off to Anup to lead us. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song. Of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer.
Father, we just thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the healing that you bring to each of us deep in our souls. Thank you. Before we close this morning, I just want to take a few moments to give an invitation. If there's anyone here this morning that you have never received the Lord Jesus into your life, you don't know what it means to have your sins forgiven, to be a child of God, to be part of God's family. If you've never prayed and asked the Lord to do that for you, but this morning you would like to, you feel that, look, I need to do that, I want to do that, then I would just like to lead you in a small prayer. You can pray this with me. The Bible says that to whoever, anyone who receives Jesus, who believes in Him, He gives them the power to become children of God. I want to lead you in a simple prayer this morning. Just repeat this after me. If you've never done this before, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. And help me to follow you and you alone the rest of my life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody here, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. I'd just like to see your hand if you've done this for the very first time. And, and uh, just raise your hand that we can see you. Is anyone? I see one hand, two. Anyone else? Two hands. Anybody else? Up in the balcony. Okay, let's close. Thank you for being here. Let's just uh, bow our heads here. Um, and Father, in Jesus' name, I declare your blessing upon your people. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you abundance of his peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. See you again. Thanks. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.